Hi, everybody. I'm Brittany Lewis, a reporter here at Forbes. Joining me now is my Forbes colleague, money and politics reporter, Kyle Con mullins Kyle, thanks so much for coming on. Always great to be here, Brittany. Thanks for having me. As we sit here, we are less than four months away from Election Day, big presidential election, and you're reporting that the president in 2024 who is elected could be the worst paid president in history. How is that possible? What do you know? Yeah, that's that's what the math is telling us. So the president is paid a fixed salary every year. Um, but what that means in, a, in an era that we live in these days of, of relatively stable inflation, and then the past couple of years we've actually seen relatively high inflation, um, is that the value, the inflation adjusted value of that presidential salary declines over time. And so um, what, what we did is we took inflation data and presidential salary data going all the way back to 1789 when George Washington took office. And we basically were able to show that if inflation continues at its current pace, uh, by 2028, the presidential salary will be at its lowest inflation adjusted value in American history. And so, yeah, whoever wins the presidency, Biden, Trump, RFK Jr., who knows, um, one of them, whoever it is, could be the worst paid president in American history by 2028. Kyle, I would love for you to give us a bit of a history lesson here. So can you talk to us about the origins of the presidential salary? Let's start with George Washington. Yeah, I was a history major, so this is my bread and butter here. Uh, I was super excited writing, on this, writing this story. So when the framers were putting together the Constitution, um, they disagreed on a lot of stuff, but they ultimately came to the conclusion that the president should not be like a king. Um, and uh, they, they decided the president should be compensated for their work, but should not be you know, getting all of the money in the world, right? Um, that said, uh, Alexander Hamilton, uh, in the Federalist Papers, which were written to defend the Constitution and, and you know, uh, advocate for its ratification, uh, he advocated for the president to be uh, paid at least reasonably well. And the reason why is a poorly paid president might be more susceptible to corruption. You know, if you have a uh, somebody who's only making, you know, the equivalent of a farmer's salary, for example, or a, uh, or, you know, a blacksmith's wage, maybe they will be, uh, you know, more susceptible to bribes and, and, and gifts and that kind of thing. So Congress passed in 1789, when George Washington became president, Congress awarded him a salary of $25,000, which doesn't sound like much, but at the time was worth over $600,000 in today's money. So um, yeah, pretty, pretty well compensated guy. Now, George Washington, of course, plantation owner, uh, was plenty wealthy uh, himself. He didn't really need the salary. He probably wouldn't have been too susceptible to bribery anyway. But nonetheless, that was sort of the precedent that was set going forward. So the precedent set, you need to be, have a president paid reasonably well, but obviously there are factors like wars and financial disasters like the Great Depression, as well as the recession. So how has this impacted the worth of the presidential salary? Yeah, so when, when we look at history, we see that the presidential salary's value in inflation adjusted terms in, in today's money um, swings up and down wildly. Uh, we, you know, the, the chart, it looks like a mountain with big gaps and, 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 and caverns and all sorts of stuff. Um, and that, that even that's despite the fact that the actual nominal value of the president's salary has only been adjusted upwards a couple of times, it's only been adjusted upwards five times over the course of uh, the, the history of the United States. Um, so, you know, for example, early on in our history, we had the War of 1812. Uh, the British burned down the White House. Um, they were blockading the coast, uh, which, you know, made it impossible for the U.S. to import goods. Um, that raises the price of everything. That's, that's a lot of inflation, right? That caused the value of the president's salary in today's terms to plummet. Um, so James Madison, I think it was James Madison, if I'm remembering correctly, um, was making less than uh, $400,000 in today's dollars. Um, even though he's making that same $25,000 salary, the inflation adjusted value dropped. Same thing during the Civil War. The federal government was printing lots of money to try to fund its, you know, all of the things it needed for the war effort. Um, and Lincoln's salary lost hundreds of thousands of dollars in inflation adjusted value just over his five years, four to five years in office between 1861 and 1865. So these big events um, really do show up in the historical record when we're looking at the historical salaries. And the other thing I'll say is the US economy used to be much more unstable. You had these big swings of inflation and deflation, um, and you had uh, you know kind of rapid depressions and rapid recessions that would then switch over and all of a sudden you'd have rapid growth the next year. It was a very, it was a much more unstable economy 
um, especially in like the the, the 1900s, the 1800s. And so um, that also causes these big swings that we're talking about. You're talking about these big swings, these high highs, these low lows. Who was the highest and the lowest paid president and why? But we did go ahead and calculate this. We figured out the um, sort of the average salary that each president was awarded over the course of their term adjusted for inflation. Um, and the highest paid salary, uh, the, excuse me, the highest paid president by far in American history was William Howard Taft. He was only in office for four years from 1909 to 1913. Um, and uh, he came into office just as the presidential salary was raised from $50,000 to $75,000. Um, that was worth over two and a half million dollars in today's money. So we're talking about a very, very well compensated president. Uh, that was his average salary over the course of his term. Um, of course, that didn't actually stick around for very long. Uh, his successor, Woodrow Wilson, who was in office from 1913 to 1921, um, ended up seeing the, the inflation adjusted value of his salary, which remember was staying flat at that $75,000, drop by more than half by the end of his term because of inflation due to World War I and, uh, and, and the end of World War I and, and then Spanish flu and all sorts of stuff. Um, so lots of inflation, lots of government spending, that kind of thing. Um, and then the lowest paid president you, meant, you also mentioned, um, that was actually Bill Clinton. Um, he came into office after, uh, you know, it had been decades since the presidential salary had been revised upwards um, to, you know, keep pace with inflation. Um, and he came into office after several decades of fairly consistent low level to medium level inflation. Um, and so his $200,000 salary was over the course of his term only paying him an average of about $350,000 a year, um, or excuse me, the, the lowest point it ever reached in, in adjusted for inflation was about $350,000 in today's dollars. Um, that's pretty low. Uh, and then, of course, it was bumped up for George W. Bush the next, uh, you know, when, when he came into office. And President Biden on this list, if every president's salary was adjusted to today's numbers, he's also one of the lowest paid on the list. Obviously, Bill Clinton takes that cake. But how long uh, uh, since this salary has seen a raise? So the salary last saw a raise under George W. Bush. Uh, you know, it was... Uh, in 2001, it was bumped up from $200,000 to $400,000. Um, and Congress at the time was talking about a lot of the same things that the framers were talking about in the Constitution early on. Um, they were talking about a concern that the president might be susceptible to corruption. And they were also talking about um, the fact that if the, the head of the civil service, right, the president, the head of the executive branch is only paid $200,000, um, then that means that pretty much everyone else in the civil service, with a couple of exceptions, is probably going to be paid less than that. And that was making it really hard to recruit, um, you know, people into government uh, who, you know, government salaries are already lower than the private sector. Uh, you know, they might have better benefits in various cases, but, uh, you know, already lower salaries. And that was making it really, really hard to, to get people who might otherwise say, I could make twice or three times as much as a lawyer for a private company. So that, that those are the kinds of things that Congress was considering in 1999 when they decided to double the presidential salary. And now in 2024, one of the biggest issues this election for voters is the economy, is inflation. President Biden seems to be a victim of inflation, too. So talk about specifically how hard inflation is hitting President Biden's salary. Yeah, it, it's really rare that presidents actually feel on like a personal level, the impact of all of their policies. Sometimes they do, um, but I think inflation is, is an, uh, inflation on a fixed salary. That is one example of where they really do feel it. Um, Biden's salary has lost about 20% of its value uh, since he took office, uh, or since 2020. Um, it's been, you know, it's, it's been a, a bit of a steep slide. We've seen higher than normal inflation over the past couple of years due to COVID and government spending and all sorts of issues. Um, and so because of that, uh, Biden's salary has lost a lot of its value. And do you anticipate after a president is elected in 2024, after November, that this salary will continue to go down in terms of worth? We do anticipate that. So Forbes, we went ahead and modeled it out. Um, and the Federal Reserve generally targets a little bit of inflation. It's for a variety of reasons, but basically they, they always aim for about 2% a year. Um, and the reason why is if you get deflation, uh, that can actually be really bad for a variety of other reasons. Uh, you know, declining prices can actually be really, really, really damaging um, on, a, on an economy wide scale. So they do aim for like a little bit of low value, a little bit of low level inflation. We modeled out if inflation continues at its current trend, which is pretty significantly higher than the 2% the level that they've been uh, that, they're, that they're aiming for, um, that, that Biden will have Biden or Trump or RFK Jr. or whoever ends up being president uh, will have 
potentially the lowest paid, uh, the lowest salary adjusted for inflation by 2028. And then, of course, Congress could think about giving the president a raise again. Doesn't sound like the most politically popular thing to do, but, you know, they did it in 1999, so maybe they'll do it again. Kyle, per usual, thank you so much for your reporting. I appreciate you coming on. Always great to be here, Brittany. Thanks so much.